shout out to my boy Allen. You know, he brought up a good point to me on one of our chats today. I would fire Sean McDermott and I would trade for fucking Brian Dayball, get him out of the Giants, bring him back to the Bills where Josh Allen thrived. He's a good fucking play caller. He got fucking Daniel Jones paid. So that would definitely help Josh Allen and whoever receiver they have in. If, if Diggs is gone, we've seen the drama with his brother now. With Mark Davis, Chris Kameinhart, Luke Rule, and Nick the Doc Skirkowitz. Welcome to All About the Balls Podcast. I'm Mark Davis in the sack house with Chris. I'm sorry, Luke Rule and Nick the Doc Skirkowitz. Yeah, very odd not saying Chris's name, but he's having a, a very upset tummy. He's not in tonight, but Luke and Doc are here. We're going to rock and roll. His pussy's hurting? Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? He's blaming the kiddo. The kiddo brought, you know how it is, Doc. I blame the kid for bringing a bug in. And then, oh, oh yeah, they, they yeah. go to them petri dish fucking schools, man. But both him and the missus, they're not feeling good. So, uh, Chris has said he's just he's gonna take a rain check tonight, hopefully, and tomorrow. But we are gonna recap week 11. Luke, you guys have probably one of the biggest games this week. You guys start us off when we we'll dive into it. But Ravens, Bengals, you know, the rivalry there, AFC North. You guys kind of need it. They need it a little more to stay afloat. But how are you feeling going into this week? Yeah, feeling good. I mean, exciting to uh, actually have a good Thursday night game for once and get the uh, get the game over with early this week. Only because Joe Burrow's playing. I mean, the Bears Joe game Burrow's has not been exciting <laughs> this year. The the Bears game was close last week. It's, it was, you know, 16-13. It was pretty exciting. Joe, Bur- Joe Burrow had half his passing yards on one play last week. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. True. you don't see this week. Well, 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 he actually historically struggles, but we'll, we'll talk about that against the Ravens. But Doc, the Bears going to Detroit to face, you know, the Detroit Lions. How are you feeling going into Week Eleven? Dude, fucking real good, man. Real good. Looking forward to getting one game closer to uh, a second top five draft pick this year. So pretty excited for that. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to Chris because we are missing him. And uh, I'll send, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a box of tampons, dude. You're gonna be all right. <laughs> Yeah, and like Chris and myself, we're both on a bye week, the Saints and Falcons. So we can't really lose this week. I mean, I mean, we like to see Tampa Bay and Carolina lose, but we can't lose in the record wise. Honestly, so. the Saints might actually lose on the bye week. It was what what was the meme that we sent in the group chat when it was like loss, 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 probably would have scored less. That's that's yeah, kind of where the Saints are at. Well, they are they are leading the shitty uh, NFC South at the moment. Yeah. Well, so until they fucking get it together and put Jameis in to start, they're going to continue to struggle. Sitting right at five hundred too, leading the division yeah. at five hundred. Didn't y'all say three teams over five hundred in that in that division? Possibly three making the playoffs. There, there might be I didn't have no. Teams no over I, 500. I didn't have three. I had two, and I had the Saints and Falcons. Um, Luke said I, the Bucks were going to have a, a winning record, but we're not going to make said, the playoffs. I said Bucks with nine wins. Well, I remember he said the Bucks were going to be better without Tom Brady. No, I had him right at right on right on par because I think Brady had what nine wins last year, right? Brady had eight wins because he sat the last game. Oh, so so yeah, one one game better than Brady. I I I do think if he plays the whole game against Atlanta, he probably wins the game. So I mean, but that was his first losing season in the NFL history too. Was was last year? So, but. No, yeah, it, it's not a huge, huge week, boys. We have like three or four decent games that we're probably eyeing, but let's jump into it. You know, let's re- recap last week. Uh, Luke and Doc both went 10 and 4, and uh, Luke went 9 and 5 against the spread. Doc went 10 and 4 as well against the spread. So Luke and Doc still tied up straight up 96 and 54. Doc is tied for the spread with 80, 67, and 3. Luke, you are in third with 79, 70, and 1. Myself and Chris went eight and six straight up. I went nine and five against the spread, and Chris went eight and six. So we all did good against the spread. We honestly didn't. We all had a winning record straight up too. But I'm ninety two and fifty eight. Chris is ninety and sixty straight up, and I'm tied with Doc against the spread eighty sixty seven and three. And Chris is still sixty nine seventy eight and three. So Chris is having a. He's still trying to come back. But yeah, he's still behind. Pretty pretty good week for us last week. Pretty good week. Yep. Yeah, we did yeah, you well. and Doc pulled away still a little bit. So you guys pulled up two more wins. So only four, it's still still a reach away. You know, it's not it's still have some weeks away to catch up. But that's Doc, straight up. that's straight up. You guys are ahead by four over me and six by Chris. So still a lot of ball left. 
Doc, you will kick us off when we when we dive into it. Luke second and myself last. So, Doc, you would have been first a couple times, Doc, if you weren't out of town or you know being sick. So you would have, you should have been first yeah. quite a bit. But. Came caught caught up to me. That's yeah, all right, man. That's all right. You know, uh, things are going to happen. We're just going to pull me away. Uh, you know, fucking the Petri dish came home. Actually, it wasn't even the Petri dish that got me sick. It was uh, that group annual. All those people packed in. I did test when I was out that time. So, I, like, pretty much my entire unit was out for COVID. I did test negative for COVID. So, at least I won that battle. Yeah, I didn't know COVID still existed, but um, I didn't either. I guess they're just a bunch of yeah. No, I'm just you know I'm just well, going to hold my thoughts. Well, you can't people just coming in a fake test. To get yeah, or you can't they, test. They gotta, po- you can't pause if you don't test. So you can't no, they it just they got to make positive. it. They got to make it COVID because they got to keep the narrative going. I think the narrative's gone. Honestly, I, I think no, because the they're they're bringing up a huge fucking COVID comeback, dude. They they just announced again um, getting your fucking booster shot. I don't know. Well, I need. I need another stimmy. Is what I need. I'm down with that. No, especially with the economy. Lockdown. Don't need that especially, shit. Economy I'll don't need that. that shit. Bring bring the stimmies back. Yeah. No. What I back. need. <laughs> what I need is a fucking government shutdown, baby. That's what I need. No, 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 no. Well, I'm okay with the shutdown, but as long as we get our DOD money, I want my, I want my money still. <laughs> Well, we gonna yeah. get it, but I want it back paid because then I'll go no, no, fiddle with spending for a little bit, and then no, no, and then no. I'll fucking still get all the money yeah. in the back end. That's fine, yeah. I, dude. I got yeah. money saved. I ain't worried about that. No, no, no. My yeah, point yeah, is, if tr- I go to frivolous, no, no, if, no, no, if no, I go no. to, to to strict spending, get rid of the frivolous shit. Like, let's say I could spend a, just a couple thousand over the next couple months, right? A couple thousand each month, and then come back and get that fourteen, fifteen thousand dollar back paycheck for two months, I'm dude. Good. I'll be fucking sitting pretty. <laughs> No, nah, I'm gonna need it. I need my, I need my money. It's my money. I need it now. Okay, I need it. <laughs> well, we got, we got so, a little bit of a pay disparity between you and I, so it's a little bit different yeah, yeah. there. But uh, yep, Luke, Luke knows what I'm talking about. We, we'll be just fine. Me and Luke will be all right. I'm Chris will be I'm fine too. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll I'm, be sitting just yeah, fine. I'm sitting, dude. I'm sitting just fine. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm like, I'm, dude, we had a, we had a, the finance brought up in my first starting symposium today, and they brought up the finance like, hey, y'all know we probably ain't getting paid on on the first, right? Like, how many of y'all are good? And I was like, bro, don't even worry about me. Uh, we'll be fine, but let, let's talk what we came here to well, do. Yeah, that's... Well, they ain't worried about it. My fucking second house is going to be is gonna be running out in December. I'm like, so they better figure this shit out. That's yeah, true. Well, as long as, I mean, that motherfuckers get, could still get paid if they ain't got a government job. They'll still get paid. No, no, I don't have a tenant for December. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, well, I mean, as long you, you just got to monitor gonna... somebody that ain't government. That's all. Yeah. That's just, that's just gonna hurt a little bit, but it might, it might. But no, let's check, see if they're running that shit out. Let's dive into um, week eleven, boys. When, like I said, Doc, you'll go first. Luke and myself. So starting us off Thursday night football, Amazon Prime. Like Luke said, finally have a good Thursday night game. We've had a couple of them, but it's been a while since we've had it. We will see an AFC North rivalry. It's gonna be physical. It's gonna be nasty. The Baltimore Ravens coming off a thirty-one seventeen choke job against the Browns hosting the Cincinnati Bengals, who also had a disappointing loss against the Houston Texans and C.J. Stroud. The Ravens' dog are favored by three there, and a half what, points. There's a qualifies a choke job either? No, because th- they weren't up by 14 with nine minutes left in the game. They were up 7-0 and right. then in the free early game, and then the Texans didn't look back really. They, they, they were uh, up with like a minute, like 30 seconds left. They weren't up. They were tied. I'm going to throw a curveball here. I'm going to lead off. All the other picks, but I'm going to pass this one to Luke to lead off because it is his team. I'm going to give him some respect. Out of respect for Luke, I'm going to let him kick us off with his team. First game of the week, Thursday night football, and then I'll go after and I'll lead the rest of them. Yeah, man. Uh, thanks. I, I'll lead this one off then. So, I mean, everybody knows where I'm going with this one. I'm going Ravens. Uh, I think Ravens win by – I think it should be a one-score game, but taking the over on the three-and-a-half, I'm going to go 28-20 Ravens. In Baltimore, get the bounce back game and essentially eliminate the Bengals from playoff contention. Bengals don't look like the uh, they, they don't look that put together this year. I mean, yeah, Bur- Burrow hits like he'll hit one big play a game, but other than that, he's not really doing that much. Like he was the fucking check down king last week. Besides half his passing yards on one play of Chase. Other than that, the defense. I mean, they just got dotted up by C.J. Stroud again. Like. The defense is getting dotted up every week, it looks like, at this point. The only thing good on defense is their pass rush. If their pass rush doesn't hit home, their corners are just going to get eaten apart. So, yeah, I'm going Ravens. 
was 2020. Got it. 2020. Yeah, I, I I disagree a little bit. I th- I don't think the uh, the Ravens look uh, broken up like like you say. I think uh, I think the I, or the Bengals. I mean, excuse me, the Bengals. I think the the problem with the Bengals is the consistency. I mean, all the weapons, all the pieces are there. I mean, the defense needs some work, but I mean that's been fairly typical in some of the most high powered offenses this year. But I think the Bengals are coming back with a vengeance this week. I think uh, Joe Burrow, like you said, week. Very uh, soft week last week. Um, half his yards coming off one play to Jamar. I think they're going to come back and and really try to hammer it home. And I think it's going to be a big week from Jamar Chase, which I need on fantasy. Uh, but I'm going to take uh, Bengals 27-24. And that was the score of the first matchup week two, but it was the Ravens who won 27-24. Yeah. Um, so I, the I agree. I agree with Luke, like the Bengals defense, the front, the pass rush is is phenomenal. We can't say anything. Trey Hendrickson is probably one of the most underrated pass rushers in the game. He brings a force to that line. But I agree with Luke. The the offense, it's a roller coaster. And it's not the typical Bengals where they, you know, start slow and then they figure it out. No, they they have been a roller coaster. I mean, even the Seahawks win, it wasn't impressive. It was ugly. Uh yes, the Niners they they played good. I can't take away from the Niners win, but we saw last week they started off really slow after that first early touchdown. They did come back, but the key drop from Tyler Boyd, no T. Higgins probably again, which I think that's bigger than potentially no Marlon Humphrey because we saw the Ravens do it early in the year without Humphrey. We, we saw them click. The defense has been phenomenal all year. Yeah, there's been a couple high-scoring games from them, but this defense is first and total points allowed. They are one of the top defenses in yards allowed as well. So – all everything screams Ravens here. And I just think Lamar is going to be better than Joe Burrow this game. Joe Burrow also, also, I I don't know the record against Lamar, Luke. I think you knew that one, but he is three and three total against the the Cincinnati Bengals. And Lamar wasn't there for the playoff game last year. And he wasn't there for the December 26 game in 2021 where he won. So actually, yeah. So where he won. So he, two of his three wins, Lamar wasn't there. So Lamar does have, I think, the overall record against uh, Joe Burrow. And Joe Burrow's numbers aren't fantastic against the Ravens historically. He's had a couple good games, but I'm leaning towards the Ravens here. It's in the bank. It's Thursday night. If I'm the Ravens, I'm wearing all black, too. I'm not wearing purple. I'm wearing we, a blackout we wearing jersey. All black. it, it is confirmed. We are wearing all black. The blackout game that brings more passion to it. Yeah. And I am going Ravens 23-20. I'm going walk-off field goal from Justin Tucker. Bengals cover the spread though, and Chris. Well, we all we all remember Bengals straight up and spread. But Chris has the Bengals like you. Yeah, I don't know his score yet. He'll text me that he just gave me the spread, so he's got Bengals. Well, yeah. Well, we all remember Lamar sitting out to get that contract uh, last season and and fucking his team in the playoffs so he could try to get that payday. But um, my my big concern is Hendrickson being out for Cincinnati. Did they released the MRI results. Did they come back with anything for that? Oh, well, Hendrickson, I, I did not see if he was playing or not. His, I think He's up in the air right now. I know that yeah, he but, they, they were doing – he had a hyperextended knee and they were doing an MRI, so he is most likely – I mean, even on a hyperextended knee, he's most likely not playing this week because um, a hyperextended knee does take a little bit of time to, to recover, but um, especially when you're putting that much pressure on it, pushing in the trenches. But um, I think even without T. Higgins, I mean, Tyler Boyd, they've got Smith um, – I mean, they've got other receiving weapons. They don't. They've been without Higgins before. They don't need Higgins. I think for this game, Higgins is a must. I mean, we saw Tyler Boyd drop that. Nah, this is just going to be a fifty Joe burger for fucking Chase, dude. This is going to be a fifty burger for Chase. No, Joe, right. Joe Burrow needs needs his trio to even fucking perform. Uh, but no, Lamar Jackson, Joe, Lamar Jackson is three and one heads up against Joe Burrow when they're both playing. He's three and one. Right. Any given Thursday, baby. Yeah, I mean, any any given night. Like, I'm not disagreeing. I'm not saying it's going to be a blow. I think we're all aware this is going to be a physical and it's going to be smash mouth. It's AFC it's, North football. Like, that's just what it is. Play. I just think no no Tyler Boyd is more important than no Marlon Humphrey. And like you said, Trey Hendrickson, too. Yeah, that's also I mean, huge as well. Our our number one corner versus them losing their number two wide receiver. But It is, but we've seen you guys – Click early in the year without Marlon Humphrey. So yeah, it's right. not like this hasn't been done. You guys still have a better we, we, better round of defense. I mean, I'm going to give you that. Well, uh, Baltimore lead the league. defensive team, lead the league in yeah. sacks too. We, we yeah, we've had a lot of a lot of guys step up this year. Like Kyle Van Noy, like 
he wasn't even on the team in the beginning of the season. We signed him like week two, and he's got five sacks already. So, I mean, we got people just off the couch coming out of ball. Yeah. Geno Stone leading the league in interceptions. He was a practice squad guy. Yeah, so, so I, I just hey. I think me and Luke, me and Luke are riding with the purple, even though it'll be a blackout game. I love the blackout uniforms from the, the Ravens cool. and Doc and Chris riding with the stripes, riding yeah. with the Bengals. Go Ravens. Yep. I mean, it's, I'm not going to say go Ravens, but that's why I have winning. <laughs> Moving on to the yeah, other I'll AFC. I'll never say that. Moving on to the other AFC North, it seems like both times now that the Ravens, Bengals play each other, the same week's also the Browns and uh, Steelers. So this week, this week, the Cleveland Browns coming off, like I said, the comeback win over the Ravens are playing the Steelers, who seem just to get by. And every win they have, they are six and three, been outgained every every game, Doc. But this is a rematch of week two where Nick Chubb got hurt. Monday Night Football, the Steelers did win 26 22, but that's week two. This is week 11. Where are you lying? Yeah, I mean, when you lose a big guy like Nick Chubb, I mean, in the game, it's going to shake up the offense, going to shake up the game plan. You know, you're not prepared for it. Now you're coming to this game without him. I think that uh, the Browns are playing all around better football, um, you know, offensively. the It seems like Deshaun is finally finding his, his footing back uh, from his suspension. Uh, the Browns are finally clicking offensively. And Joku is finally getting targets. Uh, Mari Cooper is shredding it. I mean, the, the running backs doesn't really matter who you put up there. They're doing great. And one of the top defenses, if not the top defense in the league, um, I think the Browns come out on top of this one easily, especially in the dog pound. I mean, there's something about uh, Cleveland football at noon at home is just a different atmosphere for them. Um, last game, I think, was in prime time. So I'm going to take the Browns in this one, and I'm going to go uh, I'm going to go 28-23. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this will be a pretty close game, too. It's still AFC North football, the, the second of, like, the two – AC North games this week and probably two of the best games this week overall besides the uh, Eagles Chiefs. So I'm going to go – I'm going Browns. I think Browns have the better, more complete team overall. But I think Steelers, they're, they're going to hang around to the end and Browns going to kick a – probably kick a field goal to win it. So I'm going to go Browns 30, Steelers 28. Ooh, close. And like you guys said, like – like well, Doc said too, the, the Browns are the number one defense in points. I'm sorry, in yards allowed, number six in points um, allowed, and they are number five in sacks. So the Browns are like the Ravens, um, one of the top defenses in the league. And this is a different game from week two. It's not just Jerome Ford getting thrown into the fire like like he did when Nick Chubb came in, and they still almost pulled it off. They lost by four points in um, in Pittsburgh in the Steel City. And I'm just not impressed with the Steelers' offense like I thought they were going to be this year. They have let me down with my my hot take there, but. The defense is still pretty good. TJ Watt and Miles Garrett, they're both going to try and outdo each other. They're two of the top pass rushers in the NFL. They're two of the top three leading sack artists in the year, tied with Daniel Hunter and also behind Garrett is TJ Watt. But I just think Deshaun Watson, if that's Deshaun Watson we get in the second half, like he did against the Ravens where he was 14 to 14 and running the ball, didn't look as fast as he used to. I think that's the good Deshaun Watson that we can get from Cleveland. And I do have the Browns winning this game 27-23, covering the spread as well. Yeah, well, I don't know how the Browns are pot above 500, let alone six and three. I mean, that's it's gonna be a defense. It's gonna be a long day for both quarterbacks on this game because you know be, TJ yeah. Watt and fucking Miles Garrett are just gonna be trying to tee off on them. And oh, not yeah. just TJ Watt. Alex Highsmith is pretty good too. Like we keep forgetting Zayder Smith on the other side of Miles Garrett. The Browns defense is filthy. When I mean, yeah, they gave up some points last week, but it happens from time to time. And Chris, well, also Mason does. Rudolph, Mason Rudolph ain't starting, so Miles Garrett should be able to stay in the game. That was, that was also like the last play of that game, too. So <laughs> it won't be spent for the rest of the year. But Chris is with us. He's got the Browns as well. And moving on to the second game of Kyler Murray, and all respect to him, he came in last week uh, after almost a year of missing with a, a leg injury, knee injury. But this time, he's not playing the Atlanta Falcons. He's playing the Houston Texans. CJ Stroud's hot right now. He's put himself in the MVP conversation, Doc. The Texans are four point favorites at home against the Cardinals. Yeah, four point favorites, and I think it's going to be more than that. Um, there, there's so much wrong with the Arizona team right now. Kyler Murray's not going to save it, and, and especially it's just second game back. I mean, he's not ready to go. Um, Zach Ertz hasn't been anything close to Zach Ertz in in a couple of years now, and um, 
the passing game was extremely disappointing last last week, which you expect from from Kyler's first game back. But I think CJ is going to run away with this. I think this is going to be easy work for him. Um, I just I think that they're going to go up early to a point where they're going to kind of control tempo, so it's not going to be a shootout or like a high scoring game. Um, I'm going to take the Texans twenty four seventeen. Yeah, I mean, I, I think C.J. Stroud is going to continue his uh, his path to the MVP for the NFL, possibly. But uh, I think Cardinals are going to they're going to put up a fight. I mean, they put up a fight in every game they've really been in. And Kyler Murray, I think he's going to get better as each game goes on. I mean, yeah, he played well the first game, but I mean, it's against the Falcons' defense, he's going against a better team this week. So, but I'm going to keep I'm going to keep Texans twenty eight twenty four. A close one. Yeah, I'm very impressed with what CJ Stroud is doing. I mean, he's leading one of the better offenses in the league on it. Like they are one of the top offenses in the league at the current moment. Devin Singletary he, also had a very big outing yes or last week too against the the Bengals. Were you gonna say Luke? I think he leads the league in passing too. Or he's like hundred yards off. It's hundred yards behind Sam Howell, but Sam Howell's had an extra game because of the bye week. So obviously when the commanders have a bye week, we'll see. What do you do? He's averaging the most yards per game. That's the that's the key stat. And a 15 touchdown, two interceptions. That's a seven to one ratio, like just a little over seven to one. That's pretty good. I don't, I don't think there's another that quarterback in the NFL for, that doesn't have more than two interceptions. That is wild for for the receiving court they had, which has obviously been stepping up. But they got a rookie in there. Robert Woods is your number two. Which Robert Woods? Well, I mean, Robert Woods might now be the he might be the four now. Vintage Robert go- Woods. He might be the four now at the moment. Nico Collins is going to come back. Noah Brown has stepped up the last two weeks, a former Cowboy receiver. And we see Tank Dell doing Tank Dell things. And like I said, Devin Singletary had a big out, a big breakout game. And that's going to happen now when the box isn't stacked. They have to respect CJ Stroud's arm. And D'Amico Ryan's potentially coach of the year, one of the candidates at least. He's got the boys clicking. He's got the defense playing on all cylinder cylinders. He's got Will Anderson, by the way, potential candidate for rookie of the year on the defense side. He's playing at a high level. Uh, they got St- Stingletary's coming back uh, second game. You know, he, he kind of had some sluggish moments last week, but also going against Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd. That's going to do that to you. This isn't the same, you know, the Cardinals, have, they're not the same receiving core. And I do think that Kyle Murray keeps it close enough. Like you said, Doc, a seven-point game. I have the Texans 31-24, but just too much offense from the Texans. Chris is also with us, too. He's got the Texans. He had minus three, but I'm pretty sure he's going to say minus four, too. But Texans, Texans are surprised of the year. A pleasant surprise at that. Well, surprise I, I'm, glad, I'm glad I was half right. I said they were going to be competitive in a lot of their games. They just weren't going to close out games in the fourth quarter. But I'm okay with being half wrong. I, I thought they had the potential to yeah. to be competitive. I just didn't think they were going to have the experience enough to close out these games. So, But good for D'Amico Ryans. It's good to see them here a little maybe a year or two, too early. It's good to see it. You yeah. know, It makes the AFC South a little more interesting. It's been, been a while since the Texans have been good. It's kind of cool to see. It's been a while. It's been uh, since probably like the 2018, 20, I don't know, 2019 <laughs> season of the uh, – when they were up they were up 24-0 with Deshaun Watson or Patrick Mahomes here. He won the Super Bowl in the AFC Divisional round. We forget that. So that's the last I would time not be upset good. if they made a legitimate run. No, it would be good for Houston, good for the for the city of, of They're Houston. They're in the playoff picture right now. They're number seven in the moment, yes. They are They are in the playoffs at the moment. But – Moving on to the other AFC, another AFC South, a uh, couple teams, the Tennessee Titans with Will Levis, who came back to earth. His offense is struggling, Doc. They are traveling to Duval County, coming off an embarrassing loss to the 49ers. The Jaguars are six and a half point favorites at home. Yeah, I mean, as far as picking this one, I mean, uh, I'm going to, my pick's going to be who gives a shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the Jags, another surprise. I don't know how they're six and three. They're a dog shit fucking team. T Law has been absolutely trash. Um, I think the guy might actually be playing with a blindfold on out there. Um, I don't know what they're doing. I want the Titans to win. I want to say the Jags are going to win, but they're going to fuck me again like they do every single week. So uh, why not? Why, why change it up? You know, why not just stick with what we know? And that's uh, getting shit on by Jacksonville. So let's go Jags. Uh, what's what's the uh, what's the uh, six and a, six and a half is the six spread. and a half. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's they're giving a lot of respect to the Jaguars. And the yeah, that's a lot of respect. I'm going to go 21 19 in a real fucking barn burner. Yeah, I mean, I, 
it's hard to pick. Like the Titans, like the past couple of weeks have been kind of hot and cold. Will Levis, like, like he came out hot and kind of like faded out a little bit. And I don't know what they, I don't know what they couldn't like. They just couldn't get Derrick Henry going last week or something like that. And Derrick Henry only had like thirty rushing yards. So I mean, I get that's really got to hurt the Titans' offense. So, but I think the Jags' defense can be a little bit softer against Derrick Henry. Uh, I think Jags offense, too much offense. I think they get right this week. Jags, 28-24. I don't know about the too much offense part. I mean, like, like Doc said, I'm a little surprised with Trevor Lawrence. I thought well, he was going to progress. I mean, more, more offense than the tech, Titans. Oh, yeah. Well, the Titans, we know, don't yeah. have an offense. <laughs> yeah. But, well, more than like, them, so too much for their Yeah, defense. too much. Yeah. But for the Jaguars, though, like, I'm just shocked that Trevor Lawrence hasn't developed and progressed you know where he was at last year this year on the year total touchdowns he has nine and total turnovers he's got seven so it's not a great year for trevor lawrence at all we've seen what happens if etn's being swallowed in the backfield he's not elevating anyone uh to a high level the titans they're lucky that they're playing the titans because their offense is shit derrick henry does not look like derrick henry because all they're doing is stacking the box hopkins is a roller coaster he'll have a week here and then a few weeks off and then burks he's always hurt unfortunately and I just don't trust the Titans. Their defense is good. Their Titans is defense is pretty legit. Mike Vrabel is a good coach. If he ever gets fired, I hope I hope someone picks him up. He's probably one of the only defensive coaches that I think should keep a job as a head coach. I'm big on the offensive coaches having uh, the head coaching job, but I just think too much too much suckish, too much sucking from the the Titans. Essentially, I have Jaguars twenty. Well, that's why I have it twenty three seventeen. Titans cover the spread, but Jags win the game. By six. On it. Wait. What, what did you say? It was six 20, and a half. Six and a half. Six and a half. You just took him for six. So the Titans cover the spread. Oh, the Titans cover the yeah. Jags. My bad. My bad. No, no, no. No, I think. I mean, I. I don't know, man. The 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 Jags too much offense for the Titans. I'm going to be honest. I don't think the Jags have too much offense for for San Jose State at this point. You know what I mean? Uh, T Law is coming out here like like a like a power thirty. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, he he's good. coming he out of like a D two quarterback all year, and it's it's embarrassing. And Calvin Ridley, we've seen the the plays from Ridley, so it's not like Ridley's missing a step. I mean, the guy's just not hitting the open receivers, and it doesn't seem like he's even looking for him. Yeah, I, I noticed that um, a couple weeks ago too. And and Chris is he's got the Jaguars and Jaguars covering the spread, so he has it. Wow. Jaguars at least by seven. Wow. Well, that's why Chris yeah. in last place in the league. This, well, that's why he's in last place in picks. In this, spread, this definitely. Yeah. Who, Disrespecting the Titans. Titans defense. That's what I like. I think the defense keeps it close. But this game right here that we're about to talk about, I, I don't know about it, but we're going to talk about it anyways. And that's the Las Vegas Raiders riding a two game winning streak with new coach Tony Pierce. They're playing that's for That's coming to an end. <laughs> but they're traveling to South Beach to face a fresh off a of bye week Miami Dolphins, who are 12 and a half point favorites. Yeah, uh, 12 and over. 12 and a half point favorites for, for good reason. I mean, this is another team that plays well during the day, especially at home. I mean, two is going to come out slinging the ball. The receiving core is too good. A chain's back. He just got activated off IR. Um, I mean, I'm expecting big moves from the dolphins. I'm going to take Miami 33 Raiders 20. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm I'm with you, Doc. Uh, I think Miami wins big here. The Raiders, like, cool. They they got their two wins under their interim head coach, but their their team's not very talented still. Like they had, they got lucky they played fucking sorry ass teams the last two weeks that they were able to get those two wins. So I'm going Dolphins thirty one seventeen. And like it's these are one of the games where the Dolphins play good against those below five hundred teams, like Luke was talking about. The Raiders aren't above 500, and their defense isn't phenomenal at all. Like, don't get me wrong, they have Max Crosby, and he's one of the, another elite pass rusher. He's always out in the field; doesn't seem like he ever misses a, a snap. But I don't being think he he is being sure. wasted in. His... Yeah, he he is. And but the Miami Dolphins are coming in here. They're at home. They're fresh off a of bye week, fresh off that 21-14 loss in Germany to the, the Kansas City Chiefs, and. I think they have revenge on their mind. I think, like you said, Doc, A-Chain's back. We'll see if Mostert's going to play, but Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, A-Chain, and potentially Mostert, 
too much offense. Well, it's going to be a it's going to be a yeah. two back committee. It's going to be a two back committee. They're not just going to pull Mostert out because the two of them worked so well together, even when they were both yeah, healthy. Was, when they were both when they were both healthy for those few weeks, they're both like top five fantasy running backs, yeah. top seven. So it was like Nick Chubb, Cream Hunt a couple years ago. But I have Dolphins thirty four to twenty two touchdown lead. Chris has the Dolphins winning, but has the Raiders covering the spread. So hmm. don't don't know what he's seeing there, but. He's got the Raiders covering. I mean, twelve and a half is a lot. It's not a terrible move. I I had a bet last week. I took uh, I took the Giants to stay within twenty six and a half. I had them plus twenty six and a half, <laughs> so they couldn't even cover a twenty six and a half point spread. Okay, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, Aaron. Oh, and Aaron Rodgers did say the Giants suck today on the Pat McAfee show. And rightfully so. He's probably it's probably correct to, for him to say that. Probably, probably. He's right. He's right. Hey, but, Aaron Rodgers says he's also going to be back full time at Thanksgiving. Well, full time around the facility. Well, yeah, with the team. Yeah, not playing yet. Yeah. It's just getting closer and closer. I think yeah. what it is is he's sensing there. that he's sensing that like they're falling too far, and he's like, "Damn, I have to speed it up." But uh, so yeah, so I got to get Zach get Wilson off the fucking field. Yeah, he, they, they do. Um, but, moving on though, oh, was that? Cool? Hey, they could win this week too. <laughs> Who the? Oh, we're, we're gonna get to that. Trust me. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that one. <laughs> But moving on to another big point spread for the Cowboys. Not as big as last week. The Cowboys coming off a blowout victory over the New York Giants where they, they swept them, and they swept them big both games. But they're going to Bryce Young and the 1-8 Carolina Panthers, Dallas versus Carolina, and Charlotte. Doc, the Cowboys are 10.5-point favorites. I am honestly shocked that Dallas has a lower spread than the Dolphins and the Raiders. It's Nothing that, against a, the it's Dolphins. On the road that, it's on the road. That's why. Uh, yeah, like, come on. I know. Carolina, I know. But that's, come on. <laughs> Carolina. Oh, I will the say road, one thing about Carolina. The road don't Carolina mean does, much when you're playing. Carolina does they, have they, like they fill up that. The Cowboys, all, the Cowboys have also lost to a team with no wins. So I mean, one could lose to a team that has one win too. What week was that? Devastating. Arizona. They, they lost, lost Arizona the, early in the year. Yeah, lost, yeah, what, year what, what week was that? Two wins. That was week. Uh, three, it was week three. Four. Yeah. Week three, okay. So we're talking about a team lost to a team with no wins in week three. I mean, we're not oh, talking about week nine or ten. You know what I'm saying? Like two wins at this point, still. No, that was still an ugly <laughs> loss. That was a very ugly loss. Dak started out very slow, but Dak has been heating up like crazy. Dak is coming yeah. together. Ceedee Lamb is a self-proclaimed greatest wide receiver in football. He's coming back next week. You'll see it again. Um, Everything is clicking for this team. Uh, the defense, that that's my biggest th- – there's no question about the skill of this defense, but it just seems like they either come out and they're a brick wall, nothing gets by them, or they're up in the air. They've been more consistent on the brick wall side, but um, I don't think it's going to matter against this team. I'm taking – I mean, this isn't even going to be close. I, I said more than I even needed to say on this team, but I'm going to take Cowboys. Let's go 35-10. to 10. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long day for Bryce Young here. I mean, this is probably could be his welcome to the NFL game with uh, Michael Parsons just kind of in the backfield the entire game, harassing him. So and Dax Dax clicking right now, like he's he's fucking balling out. And CD Lamb, I mean, fucking torched me last week. So uh, I'm going Cowboys. Torched you too, buddy. Both in separate leagues torched you. Oh. Well, the, I don't care about dynasty. <laughs> I have two points. Well, well, he, he, well, Dak. Well, I, I think I scored like like thirty points last week or something like that. CD Lamb didn't torch him in dynasty. Uh, I have him in dynasty, but Dak torched him in dynasty that game. I said in yeah. both leagues, CD torched oh, him yeah. in because I had CD in redraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I, CD got me. CD and Hawkinson are the reasons. But I Dak got, but Dak got you in dynasty. With, I think Doc has Dak, right? Yeah, Dak, yeah. I finally, Dak is, it, it finally appears that I have a quarterback in dynasty. Hey, Doc could have benched Dak and still won. So it's not like it, it was Dak's yes. reasoning. Yes. I could have benched a, yeah, I could have, I could have benched a lot guys. that game. Yeah, 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 I could have benched a lot that game. And I could have started everybody and wouldn't change anything. Dude, but, what's it going to take for Herbert? Yeah, it's going to be more than one first. So. Well, let, let's talk. Let, let's not bring up CMC, but let's talk about it. C- CMC could be in there. CMC in a first. I don't think CMC could be in there. I talked to CMC. He was he was he, he waved he, he put the no trade clause up. He didn't wave it. He didn't wave nope. it. Nope. I CMC try. in your first. That's tough. All fair, all fair. But yeah, Luke, break down this exciting game. Uh, yeah, 34 uh 19. 
So Cowboys. Yeah. Given given some respect to Carolina, I like it. Yeah, well, I, I have, think they get a couple points. That's how I feel. I have 31 16. I think a lot of field goals they're gonna get. I, I just think that, that that could also throw a pick six in there. I mean, he's hot right now, but still Dak Prescott. I think that's that gonna drive the game too, is how the defense comes out, putting the pressure on Bryce Young, folding like a lawn chair in the backfield. Uh Chubba Hubbard obviously ain't, ain't getting the start for me uh in, in redraft, but um, you know, if that defense comes out strong like they did against the Giants or in a couple other games this year, and then Dak doesn't even need to do anything, Pollard's just going to take time off the clock and call it a day. Yeah. I just think that the Cowboys' the offense is just not like totally. They're still going to put yards with CD and, and Dak. I think they come down just a little bit to earth. The Pan- Panthers' defense is a little better than the Giants. So I have 31-16, and it still covers the spread. It's still a 15-point game. Yeah, maybe not. You know, maybe a little eye opening for the Cowboys. It's only 15 points, two scores, but hey, it's the NFL. These are fucking professionals. Chris has the Cowboys and Cowboys covering the spread. So we're all on Dallas winning by more than you know, by a lot. <laughs> yeah. But moving on to Doc's team, the Chicago Bears, who are three and seven, Justin Fields and Khalil Herbert. I hope Khalil Herbert's going to be back because I need him in, in uh, Dynasty this week. But they are traveling to Motor City to face the Detroit Lions, fired up by. Motor City, Dan Campbell, also known as MCDC. Doc, the Lions are favored by nine and a half points. Yeah, and I hope they take it by that. Um, I don't really care. I I need the draft pick. So, um, I mean, any wise man is going to take Detroit at home on this one. Um, I think the Lions do cover the spread. I'm going to take um, 20... Let's go 20, 31, 21, 31, 21. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think the Lions went big here. Uh, I think the bears, honestly, they, they could be in full tank mode at this point. I mean, so we'll, we'll see. I don't know if Justin Fields, I mean, he should be back this week, right? Should be back. He should be. Yeah, not. We, uh, not after yeah. that win last Herbert week. Well, I mean, it was Carolina. We had to be Carolina, but. Supposed to be Herbert and yeah, had to make sure Carolina secured that uh, that top pick for you. At least one top pick. And I, I think the Bears continue to lose here, so I'm going 28-13. Uh, see, Ooh, I have no respect on the offense. I give him one touchdown. Um, God damn. I, I do think this game is going to be a lot closer than the spread just because it's a division game. I do think that Fields is going to be back. I'm banking on Fields and Herbert playing. So I, ex- I expect a little more excitement from the Bears' uh, offense and maybe the Lions, which new Mo- Montez Sweat has changed a little bit of the life around the, the defense pressure for the Chicago Bears. Now we'll see what they do against the Lions, who are one of the top offenses in the NFL. Uh, I think they're number two in yards and like top seven or eight in points uh, per game. So and they're one of the best defenses as well in, in the NFL. But I think it's going to be a one-score game. But I, like I said, I think MCDC – He's got these boys firing up on all cylinders. I think Ben Johnson, one of the best coaching minds and the, on the offensive side, has got Jared Goff looking really good. Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery, they're fucking phenomenal. My boy Sam Laporta, the Iowa farm boy, he's a fucking beast. And St. Brown is, is one of the best receivers in football. Led by Aiden Hutchinson on the defensive end, I just think too much Lions for the Bears. But I am excited to see Herbert and potentially Fields back. But I have the Lions 27-20. to 20. Bears cover the spread. Chris is the same thing with me. Lions winning, Bears covering the spread. One score game. So Bold move to say one of the best uh, defenses in the league. I don't know they had a bad game. One. They had a bad game last week, but if you look at their stats, they are in the top 10 in yards, and they're like top like 13, 14 in points. So okay. they they, okay. they are – they are yeah, they, they've had two high score games. Better than I expected, with, I'll tell you that. Two high score games with the Seahawks and, and the Chargers. But you know, like I said, it happens from time to time. There's these, some of these defenses are going to give up big points. But the Lions are clicking on all cylinders right now. They're seven. Don't give as well. up seventy. I mean, you never know with this fucking team. They put up forty-one last week against the Chargers, so they they, they might put up forty burger again. You never know. But speaking of the Chargers, Herbert and the Los Angeles Chargers, four and five, coming off that forty-one thirty-eight loss. Doc are traveling to Lambeau Field to face the Packers, who had a close loss against the Steelers. The Chargers are three-point favorites on the road in Lambeau. Yeah, I think uh, I think three point alone against the Packers is disrespectful to Justin Herbert and what this offense can do. Um, Chargers have not been 
you know, real eye catching this year overall. But I mean, Jordan Love has just been absolutely atrocious in this Green Bay offense. I mean, both the running backs are back now. So um, AJ Dillon and uh, the fuck is the other? Why am I drawing Aaron blanks? Jones. Aaron Jones. Um, I bring in some some life back to this offense and and opening up the passing game. But I don't know. It's been to to see what Jordan Love did in that first game and come out so flat footed every single game after that. I mean, I'm not convinced of this team. So I'm going to take the Chargers. Um, 31-17. Yeah, I mean, I'm going Chargers here too. I'm like, I, I, it's solely based off who has a better offense at this point. I, I don't understand the Chargers defense. They have all these big names but can't still stop anybody. So I think Chargers offense is way better than Packers offense and they'll win that reason. Uh, Lambeau doesn't matter. Weather doesn't really matter. Chargers offense is better. Jordan Lowe sucks. So I'm going Chargers... 30, uh, 17. Yeah, no, I, you, you nailed it right on. I mean, the, the, there's been a lot of question marks with the Chargers defense this year, but that Packers offense is not good enough to, to take yeah. advantage. Yeah, I, I agree mean, with you, that... you, you just gotta, you gotta keep up with the Chargers offense and you'll beat them. But Chargers <laughs> offense, Jordan is, Love ain't doing that. It is fairly hard to keep up with. I mean, almost every game the Chargers have had has been like a shootout. The Lions, the Lions are to keep up with it. Well, the Lions yeah. are ballsy. They went for him fourth and two instead of kicking the field goal right away, and then they drained the clock. Dan Campbell was ballsy, and it worked. I mean, you have one of the the better offenses right now. I but mean, you, Luke, you mentioned really Harvard the ball the time. You that's that's why he did it. He said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna live with this situation. I'm gonna live with." He's like, "I'm being aggressive all game, and I'm gonna do it all the whole way through," and it worked out. But yeah, it, um, it's a, it works back off. It doesn't. Yeah, and they could also afford a loss too. I mean, there was like I said, there were six and two at the time. But you mentioned weather, Luke, and at the time, right now, game time weather is forty eight degrees with rain. Now, that might be an ugly game, and that's why I keep it low scoring. Not because of that, but I do think the Packers defense is a little better than people think. Um, we'll see if Jair Alexander is going to be back, but I do think that, like you said, this fucking team is awful on offense. Jordan Love is not playing good football. I don't know what they're, what they're doing with the running game. The receivers aren't doing good, but the Chargers are just too loaded. We, we've seen them do it time and time again with Herbert. This is one of those games where it's meant for the Chargers to win, and that's where I'm going. I'm going 27-17. I have the Chargers winning this game pretty easily, 10-point game. And Chris is the same way. He's got the Chargers with the spread and straight up. Char- Chargers better win this one or I'm done picking them. It's it's so, so bad. Like... Another team that's burned me week <laughs> after week. They've done that for uh, years, they, everybody. They, I just don't they, learn. They, they should win most of their games, though, and they're just—they're not. They really should. Yeah, it's—it's it's true. They—they they are not. <laughs> they are not winning the games that they should be winning. But uh, moving on to an NFC East rivalry. It's been a rivalry for years, and they did play each other October twenty second when the Giants won fourteen to seven. We have the New York Giants traveling to Landover, Maryland to face the Commanders, Doc. This time the Commanders are nine-and-a-half-point favorites, two different teams from the time they played to now. Oh, 100%. And uh, Danny DeVito being in there, quarterback, uh, you know, Danny Dimes is out. Um, th- this is honestly, when I look at the grand scale of everything, I mean, the Giants are, in my opinion, the number one opportunity to, to get that first overall draft pick. Uh, Carolina can still edge out a game or two. I think Arizona's going to win at least one more. Giants ain't winning shit the rest of this season. Um, the only way they're winning a game is if, if you know, Washington is all out for COVID and the NFL refuses to suspend the game. Um, Sam Howell has been – he's been on or he's been, he's been off. Um, but I'm going to go – I'm going to go Commanders, obviously, and, and they're going to cover the spread. I'm going to take them – 26 to 10. Fuck it. Yeah, I mean, Sam Hell is another one of those quarterbacks have been kind of a surprise for most of us. Uh, yeah, he's had some rough games, but he's also had some, I mean, he's leading the some league. Some really solid, right yeah, some really yeah, solid he, ones. It's just, I mean, that's, the problem though is, is it, it hasn't been much in between with him, right? It's either been like elite I mean, it, level it, quarterbacking or just absolutely shit the bed. 
He's also the yeah, most I mean, sacked quarterback by 14 yeah. sacks too. His O line is shit. He's got a terrible O line. A team, a team that's selling their best defensive players, and for them to still have four wins is better than I thought the Commanders would be doing. Uh, so I think I think he's probably earned his his job for next season as well. And to still be uh, favored by nine and a half. Yeah, that's a that's a big point spread for the Commanders. That's how, dude, Devito's averaging like 26 yards a game yeah. passing. So, I mean, I got Commanders 28, 13. I give them a touchdown, two field goals. Yeah. See, I feel the opposite of you boys. I mean, I have the Commanders winning this game, but both of these offensive lines are two of the worst offensive line units in the NFL. I, I think that both defenses are going to get to the quarterback, and I think both quarterbacks are actually going to score points. I think DeVito's going to have a decent game. Maybe, maybe it's Saquon that has the big game. I had the Commanders winning this game easily. But it's a division rivalry game. These two teams can't stand each other. And I have it 31 to 24. I have it as a seven point game. I think the Giants keep it close. Yeah. I, you I got 24 points for the Giants. Where the fuck are the Giants pulling 24 points, Mark? Saquon Barkley, decent game this week. That's where you I have it. You better have a lot of 80 yard runs this week. He you better might. have he them just, for like 300. He just might. This, Good the, the, Lord. Both, both defenses aren't the best, both offensive lines aren't the best. So. Something's got to give here, and I think Saquon he gets loose a couple times, and I I think that the Giants, I mean shit, the fucking the they got sixteen points off the Cowboys last week. Dude, so I uh, didn't uh, even hear of Tommy DeVito until Tyrod Taylor got hurt, and they announced him coming in. I'm sorry, he I scored seventeen. Was. He scored like, seventeen who the last fuck week. Is that guy? Yeah, I I had never heard <laughs> of him, and I mean I don't even know how to describe like. I, and I swear to God, the play calling is just trying to keep them safe because they, they won't let him pass beyond the line of scrimmage, it seems like. This week's a new week, buddy. And like I said, they put up 17 on the Cowboys. They put up 24 on the Commanders. Oh, you, a you're right. It's defense. a new week, but it ain't going to be no change. Well, Chris is with you guys. He's got Commanders with the spread and, or covering the spread and straight up. So um, we'll see. And going on to the 4 o'clock window, Battle of the Bay as Tampa Bay is traveling to the real Bay, the San Francisco 49ers. 49ers coming off an electric win over the Jaguars. Bucks come off a two-touchdown win over the Titans. The 49ers, though, are favored by 11.5 over Tampa Bay <laughs> yeah. Buccaneers. Yeah, tough game for Baker in this one. Uh, Niners are back fully healthy. Um, we saw what they did last week against a equally shitty – well, actually, I'm not even going to say equally because I think at this point I'm taking Tampa Bay over Jacksonville. Um 34 to 3 last week against a dog shit Jacksonville team. So I think the Niners are going to keep on rolling right through. I think they're covering the spread. I'm taking Niners 33 21. Yeah, I, I think the Niners keep rolling here, but I think they uh they take a couple steps back in this game. Uh Buccaneers are playing decent football, not not great. But not bad. Uh, Baker's not having a bad season, but uh, 49ers at home, kind of hard for the Bucks to go travel all the way to the Bay, their Bay. So I'm going to go 49ers 28 23. It's my yeah, first time not picking the Bucks. And so the third thing is between these two teams, the Bucks are one of the top teams in takeaways. They're 16. It's a bunch of people at 18 and 17 era uh, area. Niners up there as well. Oh. The Bucks defense is pretty good. They're bend but don't break defense. They don't give a lot of points as well. Ritter helped them a lot with that one, though. Yes, but uh, <laughs> Ritter, also, Ritter, Ritter, did win the, Ritter did win the game, though. Ritter did win the game there. He, but Ritter gave him he four. Caught a, he caught a dub. But no, you I, take Ritter I think, out of the equation. It's a different, different. <laughs> yeah. Tampa well, they still, have, defense. They, well, they still have 12 then, but their defense is still pretty good. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just defense, think that, but yeah, like, it's, uh, ben, it's a bend, but don't break. They give a lot of yards, but they hold, they hold them down to field goals or turnovers in, in the red zone. They do have 25 sacks on the year. Uh, while the other teams have a little more, but it's still not bad. I, I think that they keep it close enough to, they still lose by double digits. They lose by 10. I, I just don't think that the Niners are going to have that huge breakout game. That they had against the Jaguars, I just respect the Bucks defense a little bit more. The, the dogs they have on that defense, so I have 49ers 27-17. Still win the game pretty easily. It's probably more like a late garbage TD or field goal that keeps it close enough. But yeah, if the Bucks win this game, they're winning NFC South, no question. I mean, oh, I, they, I deserve I, they, they deserve yeah, to. Yeah, 
I, I'm not I think even confident with that. Like if you say that, yeah, to I, be honest, huh? I'm not even Bucks confident with that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think mean, the I think the Falcons is, and Saints are at some point are going to decide to start tanking, and the <laughs> the worst well, team the in Falcons tanking is choosing division. to tank. They're just avoiding it. They're they're trying to delay <laughs> it as long as possible, and it's only going to hurt them in the long run. Yeah, I mean, the Falcons, with, Falcons are behind the Bucks. The Bucks are in second place, anyways. Oh yeah, by um, half by half a game because we haven't yeah, had so, our bye yet. So if they lose this week, we're back in second place. So I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't really matter if, if they lose this week, we're back. If second they win this, if they win, then they're a game and a half up. No, then they're a full game. Whatever, however you want to math it. Well, math is math. You know, we're half a game behind. If they win, however, then it goes half a game because we, we didn't play the. But same the week. Bucks also Bucks also have to play that the rest of the NFC South still. And they have to play Atlanta and Atlanta this time too, not not at Raymond James Stadium. Oh yeah, so, that's a that's a tough place so to scary. play. Ritter proved yeah, that. So scary. We don't know who the Clarks even going to be by then. So <laughs> that's fucking. It could be but, either of those guys. It might be Bijan, dude. <laughs> might be Logan. What, what might side? be Bijan at this yeah. point? But no, Bring Chris Mariota back. Chris has got Niners, but Pretty Bucks covering the spread. Uh, I'm I'm good. I'm just fucking tank. That's all I want. But Chris like, says with me, you and Luke, not with Doc. So Luke, you mentioned it earlier. And Doc will lead us off, but we're going to be visiting the Buffalo Bills, who are disappointing right now. They are hosting the New York Jets, and if we don't recall, or you know, if we guys forget about it, that's listening. Aaron Rodgers tore his meniscus, or his Achilles. I'm sorry, Achilles. Uh, the first four plays in the game, they still won with Zach Wilson, 22-16. Doc, the Bills are somehow seven point favorites at home. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Um, I, I don't even know what to say here. I mean, if it wasn't for facing Zach Wilson, and I can't even say that because Zach Wilson won earlier this year, and I think uh, this game was one of the big upsets last year as well when I had the Bills uh, against the Jets in a parlay. So um, I'm going to be I'm, I'm going to take the Bills. Um, I think with a new offensive coordinator coming in, I think with a huge shakeup that's going to happen in the locker room, uh, not like a personnel change, but just a, a tempo change in the locker room. Um, I'm going to take the Bills over three turnovers easily. <laughs> it's possible. He had, he had three and turnovers then, against them last time. Yeah, Four and then, yeah, I'm going to go. Actually, I'm going to go plus plus two point five on the turnovers there, and I think. Uh, Regardless of what happens this week, I think the Bills are going to be on suicide watch. Um, I saw a meme. I, I don't even want to say it because it's it's dark, but it was about Demar Hamlin being the twelfth man on the on the field <laughs> oh, I, for that. Yeah, I, for that I saw, field goal. I saw, on, I saw on Instagram. Yeah, that was that was kind of twisted, but uh, <laughs> I think the Bills take it. Um, every bit of me wants to take of the spread, and every bit of me doesn't. I honestly. Huh. I'm going to take him by seven. I'll take him by the spread. It's going to be right there at seven. What's, what's, the, point, what's the score? Uh, 27-20. Yeah, for, this is a tough game to pick. Like, I, I don't think the Bills get it figured out in a week uh, on the offense. And their defense just looked pretty pretty bad like last week. But, I mean, they also weren't – like putting good positions by the Bills offense with four turnovers. I think, uh, I mean, Denver is able to run the ball and hit like little screens pretty much all day on the Bills. And I think the running backs for the Jets are, are better. So I'm going to go Jets. I think Jets win it by, I'm going to go 28, 28, 27. Win it by a point. Well, and, and if you look at if you look at the game, if you look at the game last week, I mean, you obviously, yeah, you take turnovers turnovers away, right? It's a different ball game, but I mean, the awareness in the play calling or the execution in those turnovers was was disgusting. Was I mean, it should have been a blowout game. It should have the the, the, the interceptions. The interceptions were just like, what in the actual fuck are you doing, Josh Allen? Well, one of the and then, one of the interceptions. And then the handoffs, one of the interceptions was, was yeah. not his. It was that was on Gabe Davis, but the other, Sorry, the yeah, other yeah. three were on the him. Other, yeah. yeah, and then and then the the handoff the to the handoff to Cook. I don't know what happened on that. Cook didn't even drop it. 
Cook's arms yeah. didn't even close down. Josh Allen was just like, slap, here you go, and hope for the best, right? And it and was, it didn't it work was out. Slipping but... out of his hands, yeah. Well, Cook also had a fumble on the first play. First and, play of the game. And the, and the, well, second, play, the, fourth, the second play almost the fourth, got picked off. Yeah, the fourth quarter, he fumbled it, but he was able to get it back for the big run. Yeah, yeah, that I mean, I, everybody knows, right? You take the you take the turnovers away, but honestly, like just the decision making and the execution just needs to change, and that's the biggest thing. We've seen it historically with Josh Allen leading the league in turnovers since 2018. I mean, they made that very evident in the in the game last night. But you know, if he can just have a little bit more awareness and make better decisions and where he's trying to thread the needle, or maybe just hit the open guy instead of trying to thread the yeah. needle. You know, um, I mean, it, that, that game could have switched up either way. The only thing that stopped me from taking the Jets in this game, the single thing stopped me from taking the Jets is Zach Wilson. No, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm taking the Jets solely on Jets defense and then running the ball. The, yeah, well, I the only difference that, that I have the, that's the, the key for success for the Jets: play defense, run the ball. The only difference I have with that is get- Russell Wilson is finally getting back sort of into form. He's playing much better than he did last year, earlier this year. Um, I he think that great. Russell Wilson – no, but, I mean, uh, compared to Zach Wilson, I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, he looked oh, like yeah. fucking Tom Brady out there compared to Zach Wilson. <laughs> and that's, you know, they barely edged that one out. Zach Wilson is the sole reason I won't take the Jets ever, except against but, Carolina and the Bears. So the, this game I was back and forth with, and like like you said, Doc uh, – Dorsey, the OC, got fired, and here comes Joe Brady, the offensive Good coordinator. Good fucking from... riddance. Uh, he's the escape. He's, didn't Joe he's Brady the escape get fired guy. from his last job? He's on the Panthers, yeah. He yeah. he. So, uh, uh, Dorsey's the escape goat. He's the escape goat that they're going to use, and hopefully Mc... they're going to try and save McDermott's job. And shout out to my boy Allen. You know, he brought up a good point to me on one of our chats today. I would fire Sean McDermott, and I would trade for fucking Brian Dayball, get him out of the Giants. Bring him back to the Bills where Josh Allen thrived. He's a good fucking play caller. He got fucking Daniel Jones paid. So that would definitely help Josh Allen. And whoever receiver they have in, if, if Diggs is gone, we've seen the drama with his brother now. You know, he's taking shots at him. But we're going to see what Joe Brady does, former OC for the 2019 LSU Tigers, the greatest offense in college football history. We're not denying that. So, But this isn't Joe Burrow. Here, this, isn't, this isn't Jamar Chase. This isn't Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. This isn't fucking Justin Jefferson, Joe Burrow out there. And – Thaddeus Moss when he was fucking balling. This is a, a, a very bad team right now. But like you said, Doc, it's Russell Wilson. If Aaron Rodgers is fucking playing, I'm picking the green machine. I'm picking the Jets easily. I'm I would take the Jets back. with Aaron Rodgers with the way the Bills are playing. And if they I can the also Jets with dabble. The first time. So I, I'm, high on, if, I'm high on the Jets. If You know how I feel. Aaron Rodgers here. I'm picking the Jets. If Aaron Rodgers suited up fucking t- today, I'm picking Aaron Rodgers in the Jets. But the, the, it's going to be a sloppy game. I'm going Bills 23-20. Do not cover the spread. Chris has Bills with the spread, too. He's got them winning outright and spread. There is no doubt if they can offer Dabble the head coaching position in Buffalo, he's he's coming back to Buffalo. I can Trade already form. see Dabble wants out of that fucking dumpster fire that's going on in New York. He's such a good coach. He got Daniel Jones paid, and he fucked Daniel himself. Daniel Jones is but- shit. But he made him look good last year. Now that's uh, Brian Dayball. Uh, He's a great coach. He made him look like, decent. He made him look decent. He he was not turning the ball over, and he, he was a run. He was a running guy last year, and he didn't have the like I said. He wasn't throwing interceptions. He was throwing, you know, decent amount of touchdowns for what he threw for. But he got Daniel Jones paid, and that's why he's a good coach, and that's why you trade for him. Get rid of these defensive mind coaches. Don't win championships anymore. It's offensive mind. You see the McVay tree. You've seen the Kyle Shanahan no, that's, tree. That's the, that's the league that we're in. The run game is down. The pass game is up. Quarterbacks are averaging 40, 50 passes a game. I mean, it's it's a Run game is pass. fine as long as you have a good, like, committee. That's, that's what you need. You just need a good committee. And but even Bills in the close game it. early on, they're fucking bailing on the run game, and they're going straight strict to the pass game for the rest. Well, that's the Bills. That's the Bills philosophy. Not every team's like that. The Bills don't like running. No, guys. we've seen no, we've seen that. We've seen that across the board. We've seen that in Philly. I mean, I could go all day about this. There's teams abandoning the run game early and and thinking that they need to go with the pass and but halfway this, through the first quarter. But yeah. This game's gonna be ugly and we'll keep an eye on it for sure. And moving on to an NFC West rematch of week one. This time the Seahawks are on the road. The Rams are at home. The Rams did win 30 to 13 in week one. This is a different team. Still no Kyron Williams, Doc. The Seahawks are one-point favorites at home. This is a tough game. 
Um, I've been high on the Rams since Cooper came back. Um, I think the big problem right now, Stafford was was having a hell of a year. I mean, he was getting all the numbers. He just wasn't getting the touchdowns. Um, so I think without Stafford and Carson Wentz, honestly, I mean, there's a reason. Oh, Stafford's just playing. Signed. Oh, Stafford's playing? They said if he's healthy, he's playing, and they made well, it seem like he's healthy. He's healthy. Playing. I mean, what the fuck? They can't said, say Stafford's playing no, if he's healthy. He's yeah, playing. No shit. If he's healthy, he's playing. No, they said they, they were funny. saying they were saying that as in hey, if Justin healthy. Fields is healthy, man. He's playing. No shit. You know what I mean? No, yeah, he's, he's in my he's lineup pl- already. All right, moving he's, in. He's starting. Stafford. That's what they no, they were to, hinting at. Stafford starting. They were saying like they were saying Wince. They were saying Wince pretty much is not the starter. That's tough. They're they're. That's why we got to do these picks later in the week, man. This is fucking tough. Because if Stafford's playing, I'm taking the Rams. If he's not, I'm taking the Seahawks. Rams. Ex- Rams expect Matthew Stafford to start. This is per ESPN one day ago. Then I'm going to take the Rams 27-24. Yeah, I mean, this, this is a coin flip game because I, I have not been pretty high on the Seahawks offense at all. I, Geno Smith has proven he is not the guy. Such a fucking he, he, disappointment this year. Yeah, he, he fucking robbed uh, the Seahawks franchise. Uh, got paid and fucking shit the bed. I mean, they have so much talent on the offense and it's just going to waste. Uh, ah, it's tough. I'm feeling I mean, it with DK. It, it should be a, a home game for the Seahawks on the road in L.A. A lot of Seahawks fans. Uh, Rams French don't have fans at all. So it's a tough game to pick. I, I'd like to see the Rams win this game uh, 24-21. Damn. Chris is with the Rams too. Um, so obviously he's got the spread there and the straight up. I guess I'm the only one on the Seahawks. I think this is a much different team. No Kyron Williams. This is not this is not the same fucking Rams. I know he had a good game against them the first week. Um Kyron Williams did, but Chino is a roller coaster. He looked good last week. He had a good game against Commanders in the second half. I think the Seahawks defense is playing a lot better in the last five, six weeks, and that's what's gonna carry them. I think the Seahawks defense is better than the Rams defense, and I expect Gino. Get Kent Walker involved again. Hopefully they do that. And throw in some JSN, Tyler Lockett, and DK Metcalf, and they will be just fine. Give me the Seahawks 27-24 in SoFi Stadium. And moving on to Sunday Night Football. Uh, This is not a primetime game for Kirk Cousins, so this is the Minnesota Vikings without Kirk Cousins, led by Josh Dobbs, America's quarterback, the fucking space engineer, the smartest guy in the goddamn world as he travels to mile high to face the Denver Broncos, who are two-and-a-half-point favorites. Yeah, congrats last week, Russ. Um, that's just not going to happen again. <laughs> um, Jordan Addison is way too good. Um, <clears throat> Madison in the backfield, you know, decent. But the Vikings, are, they just look like a like a different team than they were in the first four weeks of the season and Josh Dobbs, I swear to God, if this guy doesn't get paid somewhere after the season, because you saw what he did in Arizona coming in and, and we're seeing the narrative again with the whole, uh, I don't even know the guy's names on my team um, and still lighten up the scoreboard. So, I mean, what he was able to do in Arizona and obviously we knew, you know, um, carrier or, or um, wow. I am fucking drawing blanks tonight. Um, Cardinals quarterback coming back. Kyler Murray. Yeah. Kyler Murray. I was going to say Kyrie Irving. I don't know why the fuck. That's what I thought. I was going to say. Yeah. I I was betting on basketball earlier. My bad. Um, Kyler Murray coming back. Um, So we knew that obviously Josh Dobbs wasn't going to have a place to start, but seeing him move into Minnesota, great job on Minnesota to capitalize on picking him up and getting a quarterback that you've seen work well, you know, very quickly moving into a new team. And he just turned around and did the exact same thing in Minnesota. I'm going to continue to ride the train for Minnesota, more specifically the Josh Dobbs train. um, And I'm going to take the Vikings. I'm going to go... 27 19. Yeah, I, I'm all aboard the uh, Josh Dobbs train as well. Dude's lighting it up. I mean, barely knows the playbook, but he's out there still getting things done. And I think his mobility at the quarterback position has really changed the Vikings offense overall. Yeah, I know Kirk Cousins was lighting it up as a pocket passer, but now the Vikings have a uh, quarterback that's competent thrower and can run the ball. So, and Justin Jefferson potentially is going to be back this week, hopefully. So that, that just adds another little wrinkle to this offense. 
and the defense is playing well for the Vikings overall. A lot better than they were the first four four weeks, which is the real real thing that was killing the Vikings the first four weeks. So, and last week you watched Denver just like they had every opportunity just to blow out the Bills and should have lost the game, but they didn't. So they had every opportunity to lose, like put that game away, and they just never did. Russ couldn't do it on the offense. They they, they had so many opportunities with the ball, and Russ was just Mr. Check down, throw it two yards, and game three on the play and punt. So a lot of punts last week. So going uh, Vikings 31-24. I, I'm like you guys. I'm all aboard the Josh Dobbs train. I, like, I love the story. And I, I know Doc probably understands a little bit because we were stationed together, but and Riz knows it. Uh, I am – I like seeing Minnesota do good. It's something new. Like it's, I want teams that haven't had success, like in Super Bowl moments, finally do good. And it's a new team. It's obviously not new because the Vikings have been close many times, but it's a good story right now. Like you said, Jefferson might be back. That just adds fuel to the fire with Addison, Hawkinson, and Ty Chandler. It looks like no Alexander Madison is in concussion protocol, but Denver's defense is pretty good lately. They've been hot the last six weeks. And to be honest, I respect Brian Flores. Rizlov calls it to me this year. Ryan Flores has the Vikings defense playing good good on that side of the ball. Daniel Hunter is tied for the league in sacks this year. They are up there with points a game for the defense and yards. They are clicking on all cylinders. I think it's not going to be a high-scoring game like you, Luke, in the 30s, but I do have Vikings 24-20. I think the Vikings get another win with Josh Dobbs, makes that three in a row, makes it six in a row overall. So I have the Vikings. Chris has the Broncos winning by more than wow. – Two and a half, and so spread and the win overall. So he, he's a Sean champagne Payne, guy. Though. He's champagne lover, lover yep, boy. That's <laughs> true. Champagne that's sucks. True. Champagne guy. And last game of the week, Monday Night Football. This is a rematch of last year's Super Bowl Fifty Seven, a potential preview of Super Bowl Fifty Eight in Las Vegas. It is the game of the week. Monday Night finally got it right as the Philadelphia Eagles coming off a of bye week, who are eight and one traveling. To the Kansas City Chiefs, who are seven and two coming off a of bye week. Doc, where are you going here? The Chiefs are two and a half point favorites in Arrowhead. I'm gonna be Tough honest. Game. I'm looking for I'm no, I'm I'm uh I'm looking for one thing to happen in this game. And honestly, I'm looking for the Chiefs to get fucking exposed. Um when I look at you know how the NFL has done the scheduling, you know, and tried to make it competitive and, and keep things balanced and things like that. And they have not done that with the Chiefs. They have not done that with the Chiefs. The Chiefs blew out Chicago. Big deal. We, we knew that was going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, exactly. schedules are except for, I mean, except for are, Carolina. I mean, these schedules oh, are yeah. announced the years like like it's already like predetermined oh, not, years. They... To... No, they're announced yes, the year before. Is. I know, I know they're made no, further no. out, but so it's, you switch it's conferences the year before. It's, it's the way you oh, play yeah. divisions. It either rotates way, every either four way. years. So, either, I mean, it, it, it's funny how it's worked out that all the good teams this year are facing tough competition, keeping the schedule balanced, and and the shit teams like Chicago, Houston, Carolina, Arizona are all playing each other, and then you got the Chiefs. What against Chicago? The Chiefs I mean, lost to the said. Lions. You got the Chiefs playing a a be the, be the and honestly the Jaguars should have been a better team but they weren't they played a shit Jaguars team um, beat Miami in neutral site and they were there and the Dolphins were there way before can the Chiefs I were can I Germany. fucking can I get there Mark can Just I get there alert. all right Being good um, beat a shit Broncos team in their worst early on in the year oh they they have to play the Broncos. Twice. No, I know that. I know that. <laughs> yeah. I know that. But I'm, it still goes to the strength of schedule. Um, Minnesota. In Minnesota. Beat a good Chargers team, I think. I think the Chargers are overall, I mean, especially with the high-power offense, the defense did a great job holding Herbert down and, and keeping the Chargers at bay. Um, then lost to a shit Broncos team. Uh, because even with the Broncos beating the Bills, I don't think the Broncos are good. I don't care what you say. And I'm not even talking the 70, the 70 point game against Miami. The Broncos are just not a good team. Um, the, and we can get into it, but a little, a little snippet of it. I mean, Russell Wilson has not been Seattle, Russell Wilson, obviously, uh, the receiving game going on out there. I don't know what is happening with the receivers out there. Um, defense. I mean, the, the, the Broncos are just not a good team. So we'll leave it at that. Um, beat the dolphins in Frankfurt. Um, they should have done a lot better against the Dolphins. The fact that you held the Dolphins to 14 but couldn't put up the points against Miami 
Um, to only score 21 against Miami says a lot. Um, I think this is going to be – I honestly think this is the Eagles' first, second real test of the season, second real test. I think the first being against Detroit because Detroit we've obviously seen now is a very good team. They're consistent. They're 7-2. and two. Um, So I'm going to say this is the second real test. And then following this, you've got the Raiders. Wait, I mean, Eagles come on. Then. You said the Eagles are – this is the Eagles' second test or the Chiefs' No, no, this test? is the Chiefs' second test okay. facing the Eagles because the they first one was against the Lions. They played the Vikings with Justin Jefferson. All right, third. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Well, Minnesota, though, their defense is – Their defense is, is actually around top 10, top they're, 12. They're better now. They were not good then. Yeah. Their defense has been they're solid definitely. most of the year. But – Either way, looking at the rest of the season, they've got the Raiders, which they have to do twice. Um, they got the Packers, dog shit. I mean, they're 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 going again. You know, they're going through the NFC North gauntlet, so I get it. Um, Bills, you know what what Bills what what Josh Allen are we going to see? I want to say the Bills are good. I want to say it should be a test. Um, we've seen that it's you know that he's kept it close before. The Patriots, dog shit. Um, the Raiders again. Bengals should be a good game, and the Chargers again. So, I mean, you know, the, the end of the season is going to really be is going to be the decision maker for for the Chiefs because you've got the Chargers at home, um, or I'm sorry, you're going to Los Angeles for the Chargers, and then you're hosting the Bills and the Bengals. So, still going to be tests, I think. Um, but th- this is not a schedule that I expect to see from a Super Bowl team. So I'm looking for the Eagles to expose them. I'm looking for the Eagles to show them what they really are. And uh, I'm taking the Eagles here. I think it's going to be close-ish. I'm going to take the Eagles 28-24. Oh, uh, I think Doc pretty much said it all on this one. Uh, I – so – I think That's they, why you don't let I me go the, first. Yeah, I think the I think the Eagles are probably a little more locked in right now. You see Kelsey's over there in Argentina <laughs> living his best life with his with Taylor. Uh don't know. Haven't seen if Taylor should be at the game or not. So that really might sway my decision on this one. But as of no Taylor reported being there, I'm going Eagles thirty one twenty eight. And the only reason, honestly, that I have that game that close because top to bottom, the Eagles are a better football team. Top to bottom, the Eagles are a better football team. So the only reason I don't, the only reason I have it that close is the referees. So I think the game. So here's the situation: Eagles win the game. Now, as the respect level over the Chiefs, I respect the hell out of them. They got the best quarterback in the NFL. This is what me and Luke argued last week, Monday night. So you, so you respect Patrick Mahomes? I respect that they are the twelfth. Best offense in points per game with no receivers. And Travis Kelsey hasn't looked like A-plus Travis Kelsey. He's looked more like B-plus Travis Kelsey. Still right, so you respect it. Patrick Mahomes. You don't respect the Chiefs. You respect well, Patrick Mahomes. I don't and, respect, I, and I understand that. I get it. I don't respect There's nothing the wrong with sec- that. I don't respect the Eagles' secondary. They have big names, like, like Luke said about the Chargers' overall defense. If they don't get to Patrick Mahomes, which has one of the better offensive lines, that secondary is going to get torched. Sam Howell torched them. Dak Prescott torched them. Patrick Mahomes is better than those two guys any goddamn given day of the week with his left hand. No look past his left hand. I take Mahomes okay, over Dak Prescott relax. same house. Relax with no, the I left would. hand. He ain't. No, come I on. would. I would he take ain't. Travis. Or I take Patrick Mahomes any day, but the Eagles' offense is better. The, the defense for the Chiefs is one of the best defenses in football. It, it really is. Which so honestly surprised me. It, it, it's gotten better. I mean, last year was a, it was a pretty good No, it season. has. That's what I'm saying. And, it surprised me. because it, I it, hate it, to agree with Nick Wright on one thing. I hate agreeing with him when I listen to him talk. But if you give the top quarterback in the league the number two scoring defense in the league, if you gave Tom Brady that, Peyton Manning that, Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> any of these guys, you would say they're going to win majority of the time. They're 12th ranked offensively and second ranked defensively. It's, it's going to be a good game. I have Eagles 24-20. But I have a lot of respect for the Chiefs still because of this defense. The defense keeps them in the games. They held down Tyreek Hill. They held down that the Lions only won because of a pick six. We forget that. It was a pick six that won the game. They won by a touchdown. The, off, the offense only scored two, two touchdowns for the Lions. So, Wasn't that week one? one of the best, it doesn't matter. It was still yeah. They've done it all year, though. 
There's they've done this all. No, but, but, done all but week one does matter because we we've already discussed it and we all kind of came to the same conclusion. Okay, week this, one and two is like the team is they, is just coming together and finding. I'm not I'm not taking away from what you're saying. I agree. They play the Dolphins week, week one nine. and two does matter. They play the Dolphins yeah. week nine and held Tyreek under ninety Mahomes, yards. Yeah, no, and I, that's what I'm saying. The defense has been like pleasantly consistent. surprising this year because yeah, their secondary can, was was I thought was shit the last couple of years. I think if Mahomes had one more receiver, I'd probably pick them over. The Eagles. If they had they, a receiver. receiver. Yeah. If they had, like, took somebody, another team's number two wide receiver, and they had but them as their number one. I'd Chase Claypool might home. be available soon. I won't be I, surprised. I don't think, he's a, I don't think Clay, Claypool's not even number four in the Dolphins. I won't like, be he, surprised. He's a if, fucking squad guy. You know, he's plays. <laughs> he just gets a couple snaps here and there. I, I think that <laughs> you got 22% not saying, last week. Mahomes and this team can oh, still yeah. win this game. I'll run plays. I'm not. I would not be surprised if the Chiefs, which Chris has the Chiefs winning this game straight up and with the spread. I would not be surprised if Mahomes won this game. Like I said, the defense for the I'll never Eagles. count Mahomes out from winning a game. Yeah. I'll never say he he will right. absolutely never win a game because Mahomes is a fucking magician out there. I'll give him that. I respect the hell it's, out of Mahomes. It's not just Mahomes. It's where they're playing. It's Arrowhead. It's Monday night. It's one of the loudest stadiums in the NFL. Jalen Hurts is going to do be well tonight, though. Uh, J- so Jalen Hurts has played big games, though. So, I mean, it's not no, like it's an something new but, for him. But not not, not like Arrowhead, not in Kansas City. against. And we've seen him play against Mahomes. Now, he had a great game last year. This defense is better this go-around. The link, the the link ain't that much. I mean, Arrowhead is, 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 a, is louder than the link, but the link is still but, an atmosphere. But, Doc, when you're playing in the link and they're on offense, is the link screaming as loud as they can? Are they, row- are they rowdy when Hurts is taking the snap? No, they're quiet. They're sitting there oh, on their they're, they're sitting there with their fucking very, tape in their mouth. They're sitting on the fucking tunnels fist fighting. No, because they're not screaming <laughs> when your team's on the offensive side while they're trying to fucking hear plays. That you don't scream well, when your That's only on going to be ball. a disadvantage for Mahomes. <laughs> so I, I just, own goddamn play calls. No, they're not going to be screaming when Mahomes is on the field. They're going to be quiet so that Mahomes can actually call his plays. That's you don't you don't scream Aaron, when you're on Aaron, offense. It's a very loud stadium. I have. Uh... No, I don't have, if I'm not mistaken, um, I think when they did the tests, like when they were doing sound it, tests, it I think it is the loudest yeah. stadium in the NFL. It goes back and forth with them and the Seahawks. But, yeah, the Chiefs at the moment have had it. it, depends, they, it depends they, the Seahawks are a bunch of fucking better. bandwagon fans. Well, I know. They, they're pretty – but it's the way, they, the way that they built their stadium. It's like a soccer stadium. The way that they, they constructed it to make the sound go low. I mean, it's a good advantage. I mean, hell. An arrowhead? No, that's the way the, the Seahawks do it. Seahawks. The oh, way okay. that they do it, they pipe like the the, the, the way Chief, the noise Chief goes. The base is better. Oh yeah, she's a better fan base. They're loud. But it's gonna They're be a good crazy. game. Their games it's are gonna wild. be one of the most anticipated games of the year. I'm glad that Monday night I'll be in Florida for this game, sitting at my cousin's house, having some beer, watching Mahomes and Jalen Hurts, my Super Bowl 58 rematch after last night's midseason uh, turnaround for my Super Bowl, and I have the Eagles winning that game. And I have them winning this game, but very close game. And I hope Taylor Swift's there because I can't wait for ESPN and just talk Swift, Swift, Swift. I'm so excited. Can't wait. He might as well change his name to Travis Swift. <laughs> He's in love, dude. I, I, I'm happy for him. I, I might have, as well. I mean, she's she's putting him on the map. Good for him, yeah. dude. You know, but battle of the Kelsey brothers. I didn't even again. know who Travis Kelsey was until they until he started dating Taylor Swift. But good show, boys. Good week. Um, this will be unfortunate. For one week, we won't be doing our picks next week. We will still send text to me and give me the scores um, because it will be out for Thanksgiving week. So this will be our last time talking NFL for a couple weeks. College tomorrow. Stuff from college tomorrow. Some, some exciting news came out from the committee, which we'll probably talk off air when we get off. But shout out to you, Chris. Hopefully you feel better. Doc, we love having you in here. Same with you, Luke. Great show, boys. I'm Mark Davis, and this is All About the Balls Podcast, and we are out. Thank you for checking out another episode of All About the Balls podcast. We want to thank all of our listeners and supporters of the Sack House. You can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at the Sack House.